Um, I just want you to keep that in mind as we continue forward. So now I want to show you my personal recording setup, which I actually have right here with me. But I have my Apple iMac computer with my DAW, which is on the screen there. Uh, the Power Studio monitors, which allow me to hear the sound when I play back. The keyboard controller here, which allows me to control the sound off of the software. And the digital audio interface here. And then the microphones. So for a lot of other studios and places where they're doing a lot of recording, there might be a lot of different microphones for different scenarios that you want to record in. But since I was only doing live vocal recording, I was using a condenser mic, which are powered and very sensitive, so they pick up little noises like your mouth moving or even breathing. Um, so that is why I have this circular device in front of it here, a pop filter, which kind of gates some of those noises and helps to prevent hard consonants like P and S from breaking through and being very loud in the recording. And I wear headphones while I'm recording just so I can hear the music um, and then I can also sing and or rap into the microphone without the microphone picking up the music that I'm listening to. So this is a digital audio interface and this connects the instruments to the microphone um, or the instruments and microphones to the computer. So this converts the analog signal of the instruments and the microphones to digital. So basically taking your voice through the microphone and then through this device and then into the computer which lays out a track where you can then play it back and listen to it. And this also controls the volume of the inputs and controls the monitors which are the speakers and the headphones. So the next part of my setup I'd like to show you is my MIDI, uh, MIDI keyboard controller. And the unique thing about this keyboard it is, it, it, is that it does not come with any unique sounds of its own uh, preset. It is only used to control the sounds that are available to you using music production software. So you can kind of think of the music production software, say, as a video game, which is providing all of the data and things that is necessary for a video game controller to then manipulate the character. So with this being the video game controller, manipulating the sounds of the software. And I mainly use the keys for melody lines and chords, and the pads are for drum and percussion, but I can't switch those around because I can map any individual sound to any of these keys if I choose to. And as, as I said, there's a massive amount of instruments, thousands of them in Logic. So just some basic recording terminology before I continue. Tracking is the recording of an instrument vocal or audio part. The tracks help you organize and control the sound of the recordings. So back when I showed you that very complicated image of the interface, all of those individual colored tracks were different instruments or audio parts that we now keep organized by color coding them, so it makes it more efficient and easy to work with. And then we have effects, which are added to change the sound of the track. Reverb, delay, distortion, and compression are some common effects. EQ, which is equalization, which changes the bass, mid, and treble frequencies. Mixing, which is adjusting the volume and equalization of all the tracks in a song so they are balanced and sound good together. I would do this step of my process later on when I have all my tracks laid out and I want to bring certain sounds into the foreground or the background and just make sure everything sounds good. And then mastering, which is the final mix, EQ, and effects added to a complete song. So once everything is done and the vocals are on, this is be the final polishing that you would do. So now I want to give a short demonstration and a simplified demonstration of the first part of my creative process, which is to basically make an 8-bar loop of a beat using a melody line and drums that I created. So I'm going to get that stuff really quick. Yes. Okay, so this is the first screen you're going to see when you open a new recording project in Logic Pro X. Besides the fact that I've already pulled in an audio file that is a sample from a melody that I actually created on a different DAW from another device, so I imported it here. But I want just to give you guys a listen before I start adding anything to it. Here and here, and these are what they would 
call gain sliders or they are the volume control. This one is the master volume for the entire song and this one is for the individual track. But now that I have this melody that I can work with, I am going to go ahead and this is how you add a new track to your software. Um, and you have audio drummer, a bunch of stuff to choose from, but I'm going to go with software instrument. And then this is the library of sounds you can start to choose from here. But I'm going to go to electronic drum kit, drum machine, and then the cheap data way because that is the drum machine that I've identified and like to use. And I'm going to pull up. Type in here, musical type here. And I'm going to start off with my bass or my 808, my bass line. And I'm going to go ahead and just put some basic effects on here uh, to start off with. And I don't have a ton of time to explain what I'm doing, so you kind of have to be amazed here. This is just adding a bass boost so it's boosting the low frequencies. Going to add some reverb. And then finally just a compressor. And then 
another cool thing about this keyboard is it's actually pressure sensitive. So if I tap it very lightly, it makes it sound like that. And if I tap harder, it makes it sound like a snare sound. So I'm going to play with that a little bit on this recording. Um, it kind of switch back and forth.
content of our lyrics draws from personal struggles or things that aren't easy for us to talk about. So this music has, or making music like this has been a great outlet for us to uh, let that out through. And the final step after the song is completely done and mastered is then to share it with a bigger audience. And I share my music through SoundCloud, which is a free streaming platform and a music sharing platform. Um, and this first page I'd like to talk about is my Epic SoundCloud page, and this is where I post all of my original hip hop music with Orin Cole on it. Um, and these are just some basic promotion that I do on Instagram and Snapchat to let my friends and friends and friends know, and other artists that I may have collaborated with. Uh, to let them know that I have just posted a new song and they should check it out if they want to. Um, and if you are planning to check this out, do be warned, all of the songs do have explicit lyrics <laughs> and you should use discretion when listening. <laughs> um, but the page I next want to talk about, which you should all definitely check out, is my Ethan's Ready SoundCloud page, which is where I post my instrumentals and all my beats. So it really showcases the full work that I was doing through my music production process. And there is about eight tracks on here, which I think are my best work from the course of this year. There are more that I just didn't post, but didn't felt them, uh, didn't feel like they made the cut. Um, and on my other page, there are 11 songs in total. So in summary, I feel the goals I have accomplished are live sound engineering, recording engineering, studio technology, music production, songwriting, collaborative art, and music promotion. So for my community service part of this present uh, my project, I have not completed yet, but I will be collaborating with Sean Lavoie to do a live DJ performance to accompany the Youth Initiative Circus Show on May 30th. And the previous service I've done regarding uh, sound and engineering is I have ran uh, sound for all of the coffee houses for the past four years. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Um, so just a huge, huge thank you to my mentor, Sean Neary, and my dad, Joe Pedretti, for their inspiration and guidance and pushing me to go outside of my comfort zone and to continue when I felt stuck. To my mom, Michelle Pedretti, for supporting me throughout my project and, and every other aspect of my life. Um, to Sean Lavoie for being there to talk through all the logistics with me and figure things out when I was stressing. To Oren Petrozzini and Cole Nordskog, my two best friends. coming and supporting us. Thank you. instruments in the same order. In other words, like I use Logic Pro X also, and I have a particular order that I put instruments in when I'm writing songs, and it's almost always in exactly that same order every time. Yeah. Is, it, is it so with you as well? Yeah, I have a, well, 
In the beginning, it was a lot of me messing around and finding out what works for me, but once I got my process down, I, I generally had a pretty uh, good idea of what I wanted first and what sounds to start with and then build off of. Yeah. So What's I your order? I I got that What's your order? Um, I generally start with a, I, some producers start with drums first, I usually always start with a melody and then I would probably go for a synth sound and then build drums and then probably a bass line after that, something like that. Do you have any interest in generating income from your work and if so, how do you do that? Yeah, that's a, it is a, a hard thing to make music, I mean to make money off this nowadays. Um, I plan to once uh, I plan to continue making music um, after this, and I would like to once I have a bigger library saved up to um, reach out to companies that provide services for distributing music to a wider variety of music platforms, and then they actually give you the royalties and rights, so you are getting paid for those ads and those uh, plays that you are getting. Do you take any um, precautions to protect your creative product? Um, you send them out to different companies to evaluate and so forth? I have not done that, no, but uh, the only thing I'm doing to protect it is, I, as I, I said before in one of the previous questions, I, it, it's not available to download, so no one could download it and then claim it as theirs or anything like that. Um, but yeah. First of all, I've learned to appreciate music so much more from this because it's, yeah, very complicated. Um, but also, I think for a fun audience participation or community participation, if you don't have an album name, you should let the audience in like the coming days help you brainstorm ideas because this is a killer picture. I have lots of ideas. <laughs> a lot of ideas. I mean, if y'all come with some good names, I would definitely one suggestion, long hair don't care. Long hair don't care. <laughs>